so I wanted to make um, an air cooled engine for my little uh, 12 foot plastic boat and um, I have the bottom end of uh, even route 6 that somebody ran without two stroke so blew the power unit and what gave me the bits so I have this section and I have a nice little um, about 5 horsepower Honda motor um, from a lawnmower um, suitably washed and cleaned and ready to go so the trick is with this is to get the unit onto this and to run now the reason I want an air cooled one is because um, I want something that um, can be rough and ready and four stroke preferably four stroke um, something that the kids can mess around with and something that if it dies it blows up it doesn't really matter um, and this fits the bill Plus it also fits the other bill, which is, it's cheap, very cheap. Um, so um, this is how we're going to go about it. Uh, I want a short shaft engine. So as you can see this section here, that has to come out. Um, this is just a spacer that allows um, these engines, to, or th these engines either to come in short or long shaft versions. And the boat I have will need a short shaft. So out comes this section. And that will mean that the drive shaft here, that will connect to the crankshaft on the moor. That will have to be shortened and coupled up to this. And this section will have to come out. Now also, on account of being a um, water-cooled two-stroke engine originally, our unit originally, the water comes in through here and comes up through the water pump uh, around the engine and back out again. So we're gonna have to block that to stop that happening. And um, we won't need it because it's, as I said, air-cooled. So, um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take off this section here and show you what that looks like. Right, so this is the spacer section, if you like. Um, duly removed and put to one side. And this unit then fits back on top without um, the spacer section, so it's consequently shorter. Now, you, this is the gear lever here. Now, I've already cut the section out of that. That is exactly the, um, the height of the spacer. This will be welded back into place and it's been marked so that um, the gear change will operate as it was. This will have to be measured, chopped, and a coupling made up to fit the crankshaft on the mower. Um, now, I have taken this off and in the section where the water comes in the back and comes up and out through this pipe here usually and goes up around the engine that has um i have blocked that up with plastic um uh, molten plastic glue gun that has filled that up so the water will not come in through this section here and up around with the impeller and out and i've also taken the impeller out so there's nothing to drive it up anyway but this whole section should be dry then um so the next trick will be to um mate the engine to the top here um, so for that I've gotten a piece of aluminium um, a nice piece of plate knocked out a hole in it to allow for the drive shaft and crank shaft which will be coupled down below this hole so put a bolt on here a bolt onto the engine and then the whole thing will go together on top so um, the next bit you'll see now is when I have that done. This is the shortened gear shaft now. And as you can see, there's a section of, um, having been taken out of it. And this is the exact uh, length of the spacer that is removed from here. So now we can have a shortened um, engine and our shortened engine shaft and um, this will still control the gears and we will eventually then shorten the drive shaft as well. Right, here now we have the coupling from the drive shaft, which is this. As you can see, the other end of it there goes into the, into the gearbox and it couples onto the crankshaft output from the engine. So here is the old bolt. Um, that was to bolt on the um, mower blade. So 
I've shortened that, turned it down a little bit on my little lathe, although a lathe is handy, but not necessary for, uh, for this job. So then it's welded on top like that. An old socket, the whole board out through it. Um, as you can see, you can see all the way through it. And in goes the, well, in goes, not easy to do with one hand. Um, right, and in it goes there and onto the crankshaft as such. Then you have this shortened tick with um, the measuring so that it meets up correctly below the, um, the mating plate and um, also welded onto the top again here as you can see and this then sorry this then slots in here and you have your drive very simple and very neat and very effective this arm here is the governor arm and it is operated by the revs of the engine so that it makes up for hitting tough pieces of grass it just changes the, the amount of fuel air mixture and it just allows the engine to run at the same speed all the time uh, now when you're out at sea you do, or on the water you won't need that because you want to be able to rev up and slow down as you wish and you won't hit heavier patches of water in all likelihood so um we want to disconnect this and just go to a kind of a standard outboard carburetor setup. So this is going and this then will be the choke and this will be the accelerator. Right, here it is on the back of my little 12 foot plastic boat. Um, which is designed to push along. And as you can see here, I have a temporary air filter on. And I just use the cable ties to connect the accelerator cable carb and on the back here I have a splash plate which is just to stop any water being thrown up from the prop onto the exhaust here or more importantly onto the spark plug behind and that should do what it is supposed to do. Here we have the gear lever and she's in forward as I speak so I'll put her back into neutral and I've put three little notches along there so that anybody that's using it will know what's where. So you put her into uh, She's in neutral and um, off we go. Right, so now we're on the water and the next big test is to start her and see what happens. And the 
pillars, you just press on the brakes. 